born an athlete, you'll die an athlete. It's in your DNA. Live like an athlete so that you can be successful. You are an athlete. Live like it. A and A. America needs athletes. Welcome to the gym closet for another episode. Joined here by Jack, Zach, as usual. <laughs> I just combined the two. That's perfect. The names combined right there. Yes. Zach, as usual. We're missing uh, Amber. She is taking care of the athletes, coaching over at 9 a.m. over at Waukee. But uh, welcome, Zach. What's up? Hello. How's it going? Um, and then we are joined by Jake, um, one of our coaches here at West Des Moines. Uh, if you train at West Des Moines, most likely you've had Jake um, as your coach. So welcome into the gym closet, Jake. Glad to be here finally. On this wonderful Tuesday morning, it feels like summer. We're going to hopefully get to some 40 degree, 45 degree weather versus our like negative 17 a week ago. So um, it's going to feel amazing. So hopefully if you get a chance to go outside and enjoy a little bit of this weather, except it's still icy outside. Yeah, it's icy in the parking lot. Yeah, say. yeah. <laughs> so they found that out the hard way almost. Out yeah, there. especially in uh, in Craves parking lot, we we have uh, some draining issues coming off of the building. So make sure that you're uh, if you are getting outside for a walk or or working out outside today in this nice weather, careful. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about the end of this season. We are in our last week of make a move season, so we will be. Um, Finishing up some of that, talking about our championship, which is in the Open this season. Um, we're going to be talking about next season. We're going to be interviewing Jake, um, and we're going to be our um, Word of the Week. So, starting off, let's talk about this season. Um, we are finishing up our Make a Move season. We only have um, we only have one week left. We only have about kind of two activities left. So we still have our pet selfies. For anybody that is uh, not yet, take a pet selfie, or if you have multiple pets, take it with your second pet. Um, for anybody that takes a, self, a selfie with their pet, tags Crave Gym, um, hashtag Crave Gym ARL, and at Crave Gym, um, we will be donating a pound of food, so we want to get as much food as possible um, included in that donation uh, during the championship on Saturday at 9 a.m. We will also be accepting donations on behalf of our athletes. Um, so if you do have time this week, grab a bag of food and drop it off for the championship. I will be taking all of those donations over to the ARL. Um, like I said, last year we had like an entire truck full, so they are super appreciative um, when we get that donation to them. Obviously, that's uh, one of the things that they with all the animals over there. Dog and cat food. Um, the most so uh, if you have any uh, of that or if you have some laying around um, bring it in and we'll bring it over to the ARL so Saturday we have our championship that'll be Jake have you done have you been with us for a champion one championship yet I don't believe so because I think it would have been strength season would have been the only yep. championship I would have been here for and I was out of town that yeah weekend. That's so this will be my first championship yes so championships are championship this season um, we are going for an open championship so anybody and everybody needs to be there to uh, to help your team out make sure that everybody that that can um, that competes in any certain event you could score points for your team so make sure that the agility season championship is on your calendar we want to make sure that we have as many athletes from either gym we're going to be competing West Des Moines versus Waukee as usual and West Des Moines, we want to keep the trophies over here, so make sure we show. Guys have been announcing that over there, uh, yeah. trying to uh, dethrone oh, the yeah. kings over here. So. Well, I wouldn't go that far, man. <laughs> That's right, kings and queens. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. There yeah. We go. Um, because we have both the men's and women's trophies over here. So um, I mean, they nice were in challenge. Waukee for a while before. For like one season, this, is all. to be fair. So but. yeah, so we we got upset. We we had one season <laughs> where uh, they were at Waukee, and we just. We, we had the uh, trophy case empty over here. And we were like, yeah, I think we need to bring them back. So we brought them back, and they're staying. So um, the big challenge out to Waukee athletes uh, to show up 
on Saturday and do the championship with us. We have um, agility based championships. So I think the last year, the last one that we did of this year was um, two years ago now because when we did this. Season, season did we no i or think no because we, no, we were in strength in numbers so we did oh yeah okay so that this was our last championship. this was our last yeah so this is the last in-person championship that, so it's been a year okay. since we've been able to have like an in-person championship which i really miss so yeah, i'm sure. excited to, to get back into that for anybody that hasn't done a championship yet i've been telling everyone this in Waukee, like they're they're so fun sure. they're they're so competitive but in a good way you know if that makes sense so i mean like we talked about you know it's been a while on the podcast that that word you know competition gets a but, you know, it, it's competitive in a good way where, you know, everyone is, you know, pushing each other to, to do your best. And everyone, you know, you're seeing what other people are jumping, seeing what other people are, are doing the pro agility, things like that. And it's pushing you to really, you know, get your best number that you can get. But at the same time, everyone's also just here having a great time, too. So it's yeah. really, it's really and cool. And it's, it's, like yeah. it's like you're competing with everybody on your team. Um, so and, and even the Waukee athletes and the West Des Moines athletes are on the same team as far as, um, you know, being on a crave team. So it's like, uh, you're, you're just, everybody's having a good time. It's, it's the, the camaraderie and the, uh, the sportsmanship and stuff. It's been so high, uh, you know, that's a big oh, yeah. expectation yeah. of ours, um, and which makes it a good time. So there's no reason to feel intimidated about a championship. If you haven't competed in one yet, um, you know, we have individual scores and we have, um, team scores so your individual uh performances affects your team scores and um and your team scores you'll also be competing as a team uh against the waukee team so the the entire thing is team oriented and all that kind of stuff so it's a really fun time um and you get you just get another opportunity to get better yourself you know and, and work work this as a workout and make sure that you keep score um, of your own scores for your personal progress and, and be able to see how well you did from you know the beginning or during these challenge weeks to uh, the, the championship is, is huge too so and that's the last thing that we have for that's kind of the kick or the um, the final finale of our make a move season agility season then we get into our uh, training camp season next Monday or our training camp for strength and numbers season, which is next Monday for the entire week. Everybody's free. Um, so if you have friends, if you have family that want to try it out um, all, to the general public, the, the week is free. You get the three team training sessions. So whatever fits in your skies of schedule, if you have someone that has, um, you know, that you've been wanting to, to get in and, and, you know, change their life, become uh, start living like an athlete. That's the perfect opportunity to make sure that they get in um, for free. No, uh, you know, no pressure, no anything. They just get a train for free for a week and see how they like it. Um, and then, uh, and then our game, our game plan will be on Sunday. And so we'll we'll have two different game plans. Um, that'll be that's an individual location. So Waukee will have one, and West Des Moines will have one. Um, the times for that will be um, to be determined. So we'll announce those online for everybody that needs to get those. Um, and our power partner for the season is Habitat for Humanity. So we have an awesome opportunity. Um, we will be doing a build um, with Habitat for Humanity on uh, March 27th. And so on March 27th, we'll be getting together. Um, we'll have both locations all coming together to uh, help build uh, a house, I think, right? Yes. That, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So um, never phase there in. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And and so we will be doing that. Uh, we'll have a sign up link for that um, because we have a, a certain amount of people that we can that we can allow to do that. Um, so we'll have a link sent out uh, through email and on our on our social to allow our athletes to sign up for that. Um, and so that one is on the 27th of March, um, and then hopefully we'll have um, we'll have a representative for what's what's her name? Uh, Juliana. Juliana yeah, will be, be in, in, yeah. in house for the gym closet here shortly, um, one of the weeks of March to kind of talk more about Habitat for Humanity and what they do and what they've kind of accomplished um, in the Des Moines area. So. Um, And 
why we train this season the way that we train this season. So strength in numbers is um, is the season. It's a strength season. So we have uh, an additional strength round. We actually have two rack rounds, one power block round. Um, so we have a bunch of volume that we can get in the rounds. Um, rep range is gonna be six to eight. So the goal of this season versus our other strength season. So live to lift is our other strength season um, that we did. In the, the goal of that season is to gain as much strength as possible. Now, um, after agility season, we wanna translate the strength that we gain um, in live to lift to power. So we were gonna train power as much as we can. Um, you know, we're gonna be a little bit higher reps from that six to eight than we were in live to lift. Um, cause I think we were five, what were we, most uh, of the time with five, four, four yeah, to four six. six. Yeah, so yeah, we were yeah. in that lower rep range. Um, but now also along with that, we want to make sure that we are mentally turning on the speed, the movements that we're doing, we're working on power and what power basically means power output is basically how fast can you move how much weight? And that that's basically the formula for that. So if we want to go as heavy as possible, where you're still working the speed of the movement. So um, we don't want to go so heavy that we're bogged down, you know, uh, with our squat, for example, if, if we, you know, if we get so heavy to the point where our, our, um, we're, our concentric motion is going to be slow, we want to make sure we're going down in weight a little bit so that we can speed on that, um, on that up move motion. Anytime that we're lifting the weight, we want to be going as fast as possible. That's going to be the difference between strength and power. Power is going to be, um, you know, you have to have that speed for power. So if you lift a ton of weight and you're going super slow, your power isn't increasing as much as you would be if you lower the weight by 10, 15, 20 pounds and you can do it fast. So that's what we're training in, um, in this season. Uh, so it's a little bit different, a little bit different emphasis. All the coaches will be um, doing those cues over and over and over um, as far as what the goal of the season is and how we train for power. Um, and you'll see too, like the, the power movements will be, um, will be through the entire workout. So we'll also be um, taking the power movements and going agility power. So we're going to be, you know, box jumps as high as you can, um, those type of things that, that are um, showing that power, that are training that power, as well as powering through on striking and all those type of things. Um, we will have our challenges and stuff that we will do. We always do our testing in our pregame, our, um, in our game plans, preseason. So um, on Sunday this week, make sure you come in, get your base number so that you can see um, your power increases from day one to uh, the end of the month, but, but or the end of the season, um, which is eight weeks. So we're going to be doing um, submax cleans. We're going to be actually doing four minute box jumps. Um, we're going to be doing pull ups. We're going to be doing a one minute push up, one minute sit up type of tests. So those are going to be obviously different than the strength tests that, that we did when we were um, doing submax everything um, with bench squat dead in strength season. So that's what to in the season. Um, but if you do have any questions or anything, don't hesitate, reach out, um, drop a line on any of our social and we will have, um, some, some blogs coming out and some things that will give you more information as well as like your lifting cards. Make sure that you get your lifting cards at the beginning of the season so that you can keep track of your weight to where you feel like you are um, continuing that speed. So all of these things that we put together for you guys, all the tools that you can use while training, those are all very important, um, especially this season when we're worried about um, a specific weight where we can go as fast as possible. So I can feel a big difference in a rep where I'm like, oh, rep it out, finish up versus a Bam, I, I had power that rep, you know what I mean? So you, you can train those different things in what we're doing. So, um, but now let's jump into uh, our interview with Jake. We have, um, speak. I mean, you, you've been doing kind of uh, your front squats. How, how, how powerful are your front squats right now? On my, like my front squats, which if you don't want to ever, uh, if you want to really uh, test yourself, jump into front squats instead of back squats, that'll be a full body workout, but 
I wouldn't necessarily say I'm working on that power aspect uh, at this point in time, um, more of that full on strength. But I think as we transition through our seasons here into that more power type training, I was kind of doing that with my own training as well. Um, but I think with a lot of that is, is, you know, it all comes down to the intent you move, whatever weight you're doing uh, with. Mm-hmm. Like if, you know, no matter, even if you have heavy weight on the bar, it might move slow. If you focus on, you know, driving that weight up, whether it's in a squad, a bench, whatever it might be, if you just like, and I think that's a word I'll use a lot when I'm coaching athletes this next upcoming season is intent. And right. I think I use it a lot now with agility and trying to keep movements explosive. You know, whenever I move a weight, I try to do it with intent. I don't move it just to move it sometimes. Right. You know, there's those days where you kind of have to force yourself through a workout. You're like, oh, I just got to move this weight. Yeah. But, you know, if, I think if you focus on, you know, moving that weight, making that movement, <laughs> whatever you're doing with intent, even if the speed isn't always the fastest, I think you're going to, um, you know, make those little progress steps towards that power development. And that's kind of the way I like to focus in, you know, my own right. training with my front squats, even though they're so heavy that I feel like I'm going to crumble under them sometimes. It's like, yeah. you know, if I just focus on, Hey, I'm going to drive this bar up, even if it doesn't look fast. Um, you know, I'm pushing it with as much intent as possible. I think, right. you know, it's, a, it's those little baby steps. Eventually I'm going to, you know, drop that weight and, and move the, it fast, but it's right. like and that's the thing, building yeah. that, those, that foundation of, you know, Hey, if I move everything with a little bit of speed, at least in my, you know, my intention to move it, I think yeah. it goes a long way towards and that. that that's power. one of the things that I was talk, talking about earlier is when you, when you turn that on in, in your mind, when you're concentrating on that rep and you're like, oh, I'm going to drive it fast, mm-hmm. you're training for speed because you're trying to move as fast mm-hmm. as possible. So exactly. even if it, even on the outside, if it's not moving fast, you're still working on training that power. And, and same thing with, um, like you said, the intent of, you know, we should always be, if you're just coming in, going through the motions, you're not going to be getting the maximized workout you can. Um, and the training the whatever skill, whatever um, footwork, whatever goal that we're training for, if if you don't do it with intent and you just go through that rep to go through the mm-hmm. motions and get it done, which a lot of times we do if we're tired towards the end of the workout, right? But if you can, and it's like, that's a great thing to talk about this season is it went, and we probably overstated it a million times is when you're tired, instead of going through the motions and just you know, uh, slow high knees over the hurdles. Mm-hmm. If you can rest for 10 seconds and then go hundred percent high knees through the hurdles, that's the, the, what we're trying to get after this season. So exactly. That's awesome. And I think that's something, you know, uh, if your workout works out so that you get agility that last round of the day, it's like, there's no going, no uh, way around it. You're going to be tired at that point in the day. Right. So it's like, instead of, you know, hitting four times through that ladder in the 30 seconds, if you can go twice, but do it two times as fast as you would have done it at that four times oh, yeah. during right. the 30 seconds, I think you're going to get more out of that than you would, you know, forcing yourself to go through slower for that four Definitely. times for more reps just and to stuff. It's keep like, moving. It, yeah, it's like, you're just forcing yourself to move. You're not really getting anything out of that. You're burning calories, I guess, but it's like, right. you want to develop those skills, those, you know, agility skills, speed, change of direction, all that stuff that we, you know, want our athletes to focus on, you know, move like athletes. I think if you just do more things with intent, even if it means taking a couple less reps, I think you'll see um, the improvement in yourself and that'll go a long ways more than just, just doing the reps to do them. Definitely. So let's talk a little bit about, um, so our goal when, when we bring any of our coaches in is just to get to know them a little bit more. So go over kind of your, um, your past in, in athletics, what got you um, to where you are in the mindset of, of being an athlete um, and kind of where that started and then what where did that transition into kind of the strength and conditioning coaching type of side of things so i've been an athlete my whole life i think you know as soon as i could you know run i was playing basketball or soccer or something like that um and that kind of just you know my dad was always into sports so i was just into sports i love watching them and stuff on tv so it was always something i was into So, you know, I've been an athlete my whole life and I got the, I played, you know, soccer, baseball, basketball growing up. Um, Soccer was kind of my main sport through high school. From Norwalk? Yep, I'm from Norwalk, not too far down the road here. I had a pretty good soccer program when I was there. And um, so that's kind of where, you know, I really found my passion in athletics was through soccer. And I actually got to go play at college down at Simpson. So just a little bit further down the road, not too far. I never really have left the Des Moines area, but I enjoy it here. Um, And I think... um, my passion for like coaching and stuff stems from how, um, you know, I've had some really impactful coaches in my life. My high school soccer coach in Norwalk was, um, one of the best coaches I've ever had in my life. He's incredible at his job. I got a really good coach at Simpson. And so I think, you know, seeing the impact they've had on my life and 
you know, the lessons you learn from your coaches, because, you know, if, if, I think if a coach only teaches you your sport or um, if they're a strength conditioning coach, they only teach you how to lift to their full potential. Definitely. I think, you know, they got to be able to do much more than that, teach you those life lessons, help you be a better person off the field or off the court. So I think, you know, the way um, my coaches kind of did that for me is like, hey, I want to be able to do that for someone else. So that's kind of where I'm like, maybe, you know, coaching is that route I want to go down. And, you know, being an athlete, it's just the best of both worlds. I got to be around sports, athletics, and, you know, have that impact on people's lives. Um, specifically, uh, I was the scrawniest kid you'll ever see um, my first couple of years of high school. Okay. Uh, I probably weighed 130 pounds soaking wet. I was just like, you know, skin and bones, you almost look like. Yeah. And I think... What really changed, and I think this helped me in you know my athletics career, was getting in the weight room. Definitely, I dived into the you know strength conditioning back in high school, my sophomore year. As soon as they let you you know go in the weight room, and I think by the end of high school, and you know growth spurts happen. I don't know if I grew much height wise, but I added you know pounds of weight in that right. those last awesome. couple of years of high school. And I think the impact the weight room had, um, with as important as sports were in my life, to you know how well I could do sports, the fact that I got to go play sports in college, um, the impact the weight room had really was really important to me. So I'm like, you know, I like coaching. I like the weight room. Why not combine the, uh, the two of them and, you know, kind of dive down that way for like a career path. And, you know, I got to college, got to study exercise science, got to work in the strength and conditioning department at Simpson College. Um, really good coach down there. And it was, you know, a lot of fun. And I'm like, I get to work with athletes, help them become better at their sport, even though I might not know. Um, and I think it's a little more broad when you go strength and conditioning. It's like people that might not be athletes in their sports anymore, but, you know, they want to be athletes for life. And I think the fact that, you know, strength and conditioning gives you that super, super broad avenue to work with people of all, you know, athletic abilities, backgrounds and stuff like that, and coach them at the same time. Right. I think that's kind of where, you know, why I find my passion in it. Nice. I've always said, like, a strength and conditioning coach, it's it's our job to make you more athletic mm-hmm. and make you bigger, stronger, faster. Um, it's the coach's job to make you more skilled at your sport. Exactly. You know, and so um, now how, how skilled you can be directly reflects from your athletic ability, you mm-hmm. know. So um, so I now, obviously, with Crave, um, you know, living like an athlete for the rest of your life, you want to train, and all of that translates to life in general, sports if you you know if you choose to go run a race that that's one of the big things that i think is the the biggest the one of the coolest things that i've always wanted to continue to stay an athlete and and continue to train like an athlete continue to live your life like an athlete is to um to not be uh forced to give up opportunities right so like um someone gives you a call and says hey you want to play uh you want to go play some basketball or you want to go do a, a random soccer game. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, because you're still training, because you're still in shape, you can just easily say, oh, yeah, I'm in. That's awesome. Um, you know, whereas you would probably be a little bit more hesitant if you weren't training, if you weren't mm-hmm. living like an athlete, if you don't have, you know, been doing ladder drills, agility drills, stuff like that, that you feel like you would be either a hindrance to the team or mm-hmm. you perform as well as you should when you're doing those things, even if it's like, a marathon. How many people don't run marathon? And I'm one of them. Don't run marathons because you don't feel like you can run a marathon exactly. or a half marathon or whatever it might be. Now, for, for me, I'm not going to run because <laughs> my knees would. I, I last oh, so three you, miles. You and me both. <laughs> I last three miles, and, and I've I've done a 10k that that I lasted three miles. I was where it's at. But uh, you know, with that or or an OCR race, you know, mm-hmm. an obstacle course race, like those things. If if you get invited to do something or or something like that comes up, you can just say, yeah, I mean, you don't have, um, and then you get into life and especially like the, the crap that we've been dealing with here in, in Iowa and I guess every, a lot of different places, Texas had snow. So, um, so, you know, just being able to go outside, scoop snow and Mm -hmm. be like adequately, uh, you know, able to do it without Mm -hmm. passing out and not being (laughs) able to move any snow, you know, like that stuff, you know, you're moving your body in a certain way that if you weren't training like an athlete. Love about what we do here and you know the train like an athlete for the people that might not be athletes anymore 
or you might still be an athlete, but you know, whatever your you know purpose is for being here, you get to train like an athlete. And I think like in my uh, like view of training, working out, whatever you want to call it, the biggest flex you can have is being able to move well. I was right. going to say, it's cool to, you know, be able to throw 405 pounds on a back, on a bar and back squat it or deadlift 600, whatever it might be. Right. Um, like those are super cool, but I'm like, if you can, you know, beat someone in a sprint around like in an, an agility type situation, super quick or throw, go up and, you know, hit like a 32 inch vertical or something, even if you're right. 40 or 50 years old, because, but because you train like an athlete, you can go and do something athletic like that. I think that's the biggest flex you can have you know physically right especially as you get you know past your athletic years and stuff like that yeah just being able to move well do something athletic um i think that's like the the biggest flex i think that's an awesome thing that we get to do with our athletes exactly. that you know train them to move like an athlete yeah and i think too like the constraints like you said lifting 400 pounds is great but the constraints are only in the gym on a rack like yeah you know what i mean like you know you're not gonna you're not gonna find a reason to go do that, do that on a camping out in public trip. yeah but like if on a tramping on a camping trip your buddy says hey brace you over there and you just smoke them yeah you know exactly I mean? like those everyday type of fun competitive type of mm -hmm. things that you can do all the time or if you're you know at like smash park and you're doing um, want to play some pickleball or whatever, and you're able to move and side to side, you know, and, yeah, and, and your physical capabilities, um, like you said, flex on everybody that that isn't training like athletes. So it's uh, that's always fun to, as well to mm -hmm. to have that advantage in in whatever you're doing. But um, so talk about. I always ask this question. So you've had many coaches growing up. Give us some examples, maybe of something that your coach did that you've kind of um, brought into your statement and then potentially if you had coaches that um, you learned from anything negative that they did something that you know you make sure one way or the other you might have learned from mm -hmm. a bad coach what not to do or you might have learned from some of your great coaches what to add to your mission statement and what to what you want to um, put into your coaching for all of your athletes. I would, I've, I've, I've been pretty lucky. I haven't run into too many, you know, bad coaching situations. I think sure. every coach I've had has probably handled something wrong at some point. General, you know, rule. I don't think I've ever run into a coach where I was like, I hate that sport because of them or, sure. yeah. um, they, you know, made my life worse because of the way they coached. I've been pretty lucky to have some really good coaches and the fact that they've wanted me there. They've That's made awesome. me want yeah. to be coaches. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is that I've gotten, you know, as a consensus from all my coaches is, uh, the leadership that they bring to the teams. I think as a coach, you set the tone for the program you're running, whether it's sports, athletic, um, like strength and conditioning and stuff like that. Um, or even if it's not in the sports world, if you're like the leader of a group, I think like yeah. being able to lead is super, super important. So that's, you know, taking responsibility for the good things and the bad things, you know, um, um, autonomy to, you know, make their own decisions and learn from them as well. But, you know, being able to guide them along. And I think um, I got that from every soccer coach I've ever had, especially at the high school and college level. Um, I was lucky enough to be team captain for, in both spots. So it was like, you know, they might set the tone for the program, but they gave me the opportunity to lead from within. And, you know, sure. getting that captain's band in soccer is a big deal. So I just think, you know, the leadership skills that, you know, those coaches displayed and let me um, develop on my own has probably been the, the most important thing I would, I don't think, um, you can be able to, you know, stand up in front of a room, especially when you have, you know, 10, 15, 20, or, you know, even more, more people following your lead. Sport or at a business or in strength and conditioning, um, you could have the perfect program on paper, but if you don't have the skills to lead people through it, um, it's worthless. So right. I think, you know, the the opportunities I got to develop that leadership and you know see good leadership firsthand from my coaches was probably the the most impactful thing that I would say I got from them. Sure, awesome. Yeah, and that, we talked about that a little bit earlier, is uh, or yesterday I think it was. But um, you know, the the best coaches that can lead and have the intangibles that it takes to take a group of athletes, a group of adults, and and get them to do the best that they can in any given circumstance. Um, and, and like we said, there's a lot of different coaches that might have the X's and O's down and they may be able to program something. They may be able to uh, know the, the, the dynamics of and, and how to do 
a specific movement really well or something like that. But if they can't communicate that to athletes and get the people to um, to to do what they want to do, then it, it and that's one like one of the big lessons that I learned. And this, I, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but like. It's always funny to me when somebody gets out of college and they want to use some of those technical terms Mm -hmm. and me being in, you know, being a coach for as long as I have, it's cool that, you know, technical terms and and all of that kind of stuff, but Jim and Tom don't know those technical terms. So if you're telling someone to, you know, uh, move their scapular a certain way and they're looking at you like, what is that? it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. And so like to be able to communicate and you have to know, like in order to teach the material, you Mm -hmm. have to know the material better than just, you know, what, how do you describe the scapular? How do you tell someone the layman's terms for it and and use those? And then that's one thing like early on in my career, I was always, you know, I was, I found myself a lot of times getting weird looks with my athletes when I would, when I would say something mm-hmm. like that and, uh, or, or move, move, uh, you know, laterally or, and like, or we use like supinate and yeah. like pronate. Yeah. Yeah. Like, describe that in simple terms. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so like to be able to, okay, supinate, like you're holding a, a bowl of soup, like, the, those little things to know the, mm-hmm. those grips and, and that terminology and be able to translate that to the athletes, that's more important than someone that knows all of the terms. Well, you know I think, I mean? and I, I heard this somewhere, maybe in a tweet on Twitter, it's like, <laughs> you can, you know, be super, super book smart, but in, for most cases, if you can't explain it to someone that has no background in it, like you probably don't know it as well as you think you do. If you can right. explain it to someone that would have no background, no idea what you're talking about, exactly. and they can get the concept, you probably know it pretty well. If right. you have to describe it in the way the book described it to you, you're just like regurgitating that information. It might make sense in your head, but you probably don't understand the idea as good as you think you right. do. And you can't explain you. it yeah. in simple terms that anyone could understand. That's so. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you're a Twitter guy. Oh, I'm on Twitter way too much. So, and that's <laughs> interesting to me. So, like, I don't see many guys your age, and, and I'm aging myself out here, but I don't see many guys your age on Twitter as much as like what are the Snapchat and some yeah. of those other ones what what made you like not an Instagram not a as much a Facebook or whatever what, yeah. what made you so I Twitter? think with like Instagram especially you have to have a little bit of artistic ability or sure. an eye for a good photo yeah I have none of that um and it, so I was just like you know what if I have to you know cut one social media away that I don't want to use it's probably gonna be Instagram Twitter you just have to be funny sometimes and be able to share things that uh, people want to, you know, like or retweet. Yeah. I think I'm pretty good at that. I love it. And, <laughs> you know, as a, so that's just me like, you know, producing my own content in terms of, you know, digesting content on, you know, an Instagram versus a, a Twitter. I just like reading things more than I like, you know, seeing pointless photos of someone on the beach somewhere. Sure. It's like, right. I don't get anything out of that. It's like, I can follow, I probably follow way too many strength coaches on Twitter. So I get to read all the, you know, training stuff that they're implementing in their programs or, you know, I've started uh, getting into the stock market. So I get to read about that on Twitter. It's a great place. It's just a great place to, you know, I think gather information. So I like reading through things on Twitter a lot more than I would anywhere else on any other social platform. So that's kind of where I, that's where I, plus it was the first one ever, the first social media ever got in high school. So it's the one I've used the most my whole life. I can't do Twitter for one reason. And only one reason I love Twitter other than this is that you have to, it starts you from like the bottom Mm -hmm. and you have to like, I want to, I want like the newest information to come first and then I can scroll like every other social media. So like, so like if I'm, if I'm going to get like, if I want to get a Instagram or Facebook, my wall starts at the top and you scroll down from old to get older stuff. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if I decide I don't want to scroll anymore, Mm -hmm. I'm not missing anything because it was so long ago that it doesn't matter. When was the last time you were on Twitter? Like, I'm I'm on Twitter quite a bit. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my Twitter doesn't do that. I I need to... I don't know if it's like... It's like if I leave the app for an hour, but I come back, it'll put me back where I was and then I can go back to the top. But it always like, if I just like open like refresh, it goes newest down. 
for me on Twitter. So maybe I'm just not refreshing. So if you, I mean, because if I leave the app but I come back, it'll show me you know the tweets from two hours ago when I was on or there. Yeah, that's where it like starts me most times. But then if you just click the home button, it takes you all the way to the top. It's just yeah. Oh, you hit the home button. Gotta, you gotta hit, hit the home yeah. button. There you go. All right. I might. I might be. A, I gotta hit <laughs> now, the home now button. You just gotta learn the tips and tricks yeah. on how See, to use it. See, I always it. share. I always, I like tweet and and from Crave account from my own mm-hmm. account, all that kind of stuff. But it's because I do like an Instagram post or a Facebook mm-hmm. post. And I do like multi share. You like, just share, share it there, with yeah. multiple different uh, places. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so that's that's interesting. I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to hit that home button and go to the top. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That's, <laughs> because like, and, and the the thing that sucks too is I get do do you get like is do you get a feed? Maybe I don't follow enough people, mm-hmm. so it's populating my my feed with, with random, things, random yeah. shit because yeah. there's so much shit I don't want to like. <laughs> On mine, but maybe I need to follow more people. I that say, I, sometimes I, I don't really have that anymore. I went through. There was like a time for a couple months where I like really went through and I like blocked everything I didn't want to see. Like basically, right. and cause there, there would be like a bunch of like ads and just yeah. random like fake accounts that were like tweeting ads and stuff, and I would just like block every single one that I saw. Yeah, and like report them. Oh, so I did then, the same thing, and now my and now I don't have any of that. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna need to do that too. Yeah, what I want to see. Yeah, because my feed is like Ad completely right. random, like. I mean, imagine stuff that would be like, uh, like um, reality TV shit. Yeah. Like I don't care about re- reality TV or yeah, Survivor yeah. or whatever you're <laughs> tweeting at me. Like, why is this on my feed? Right. I don't follow. I don't know this person, and now I'm getting like Survivor tweets. I was gonna say, if yeah. I ever see something like I don't need any of that on my feed, I just go mute that sub, mute that subject. Okay. I need to, I'm yeah. gonna have to dive in. I mean, I, I, I just think it's a great I place that I like, time. especially if you you find the right people to. There's like all sorts of like, like I said, I follow a bunch of strength coaches because that's what I'm into. Yeah. And it's just a great place. I think I get half of the information I know about strength and conditioning, you know, at least on a practical coaching level, not like on a book smarts level right. from Twitter because I see all these coaches like, hey, this is what we do in our weight room or this is, you know, how we do this or that. So it's like, it's just right. a great place for hmm. to, to get a ton of information from people in, you know, whatever field you want to learn about. Yeah, right. I'm definitely going to have to figure that yeah. out. Well, right. that's the thing, because like for, so Twitter, I don't have, I don't think I have any ads on Twitter, actually. Really? Facebook, on the other hand, every other thing is an ad. Yeah. Like I was telling you about the Raise Energy. Yeah. And how I have like three Raise Energy ads in like, over the course of like No six free ads on here. Posts, so. <laughs> no free ads, Raise. He meant, he meant, we'll, uh, have to, yeah. we'll have to bleep that out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that, like, I guess I don't scroll much other than on Twitter. Yeah, I would say I usually I don't. They're just then, like I feel like, like yeah. I'm on Facebook, into... I don't I don't scroll much. I only like post my own content, so I don't really. Oh, yeah, Thank and you. I don't really follow them. Like I I don't follow people, or I don't even post my own like personal content yeah. very much. I just mm-hmm. kind of post crazy post stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But all right, so um, we don't want to run out. You have ten o'clock, right? So yeah, we got um, about we got a couple about minutes here. So minutes. we're gonna go into our fast uh, fast five that we do with all of our coaches. So you just have to tell me favorite. All right. What is your favorite? And uh, and we'll go fast here. Favorite food? Mexican food. I don't care if it's like Ponchero's, like burrito style, or if a restaurant, you know, go and sit down. It's definitely Mexican food everything, all day long. Everything. Oh, favorite color? <sighs> tie between pink or orange. I love both those colors. Really? Uh, yeah. I've always, That's interesting. I've always loved uh, pink for whatever reason. In high school, I used to have a pink backpack. because a pink Nike backpack. Nice. That's how people knew me around high school, because I was the, the one guy that I had just this it. bright, like, Bright pink backpack all around school. That is awesome. That is awesome. Also and like orange though too. Yeah. Right, well, well, this is the perfect season for orange. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, what's your favorite sport? Soccer. Uh, what's your favorite lift? It's got to be the squat. I think yeah. that's just the 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 coolest. You can probably lift more weight doing a deadlift and whatnot, but I think a, a squat translates over to like all that athletic ability more. Plus, I think you know having however many hundred pounds just sitting on your shoulders. And being able to sit down and sit back up with this is pretty cool. This makes you badass, right? You and Ray Ray both, uh, yeah. he's a rugby player, loves the legs. Uh, what's your favorite TV show? TV show. That one's tough. I probably have to go with something off of Netflix because I don't watch like what's ever on TV, really. Uh, is TV still around? There's some stuff. Like, I got Unforged Bachelor now, and I don't think it's oh, a fun yeah. show. Like, I don't think the show's like terrible. Show, but it's but so, like, it if, you, well. if you get, like, yeah. if you just sit there with like a couple, <laughs> like, friends or something and, like, make fun of everything, it's actually kind of a fun experience. Very entertaining. So like, I, mean, I had to go on TV, exactly honestly, right I think now. I'm not in it because I don't, I, I would say, I'm, I guess I'm like the Bachelor Bachelorette, just because, <laughs> like, I don't think, I think the point of the show is stupid, I think, you know, 
uh, I, I could care less how the thing ends up, but it's really funny to sit there and make fun of how everything right, like, how plays everything out because going. it's like that 10 times more dramatic than it needs to be. I've never looked at it like that, and I like that. Well, in college, we used to like, angle. I started watching it in college because my friends were like, hey, let's like, uh, you know, uh, crack open some beer and watch this. So we like yeah. would, you know, drink and watch The Bachelor, and it's like, it is hilarious if you take to just right. like make fun of all the dumb thing. Like, if you sit back and watch about how dumb it really is, right. it's so much fun, especially so if you get with a group of people. Yeah. It, it can be like like the best comedy experience you've ever yeah, had. Yeah, you, you see a dumpster on fire, you're gonna like look at right. it. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know? That's exactly what it is. Right. So I guess I'd probably have to say that if I went with something off Netflix, probably like Stranger Things. I think it's a okay. really good yeah. show. Cool. But those are probably probably it. Yeah. Nice. All right. So um, thank you. Yeah. For, hopefully everybody got to uh, get to know Jake a little bit. We're gonna go on to our um, and if you have to pop out, I was say I got about time, ten minutes. So I can yep. hang around for a little bit. Cool. Yeah. So if you have to pop out anytime, let us know. Um, but today, our word of the week, um, we're going to finish off with our wow, is failure, fail. So um, a lot of people are scared of the word fail, and it kind of goes back to that compete thing that we talked about, um, you know, that it has like a negative connotation. <laughs> and, and failure, um, you know, I think it has gotten drilled into people's mind as something negative that means you didn't accomplish something that, um, that you wanted to accomplish or whatever. I think, um, you know think about failure of um you know spin your viewpoint on it and, and take it from a different angle um failure is in, imperative to su success and so um obviously the the definition of failure is to be unsuccessful in something um but if if you learn from that if you learn from being not successful that's when failure is super valuable in your life um so it's it's almost how you react to the word versus the word itself um, or the, the thing that you were unsuccessful for. Uh, the, so a couple quotes is, we learn from our failures, not our successes. Um, and success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. So um, one thing you know that, that you have to go to is, is the, if, if you go to failure, and, and there's a lot of different things that this correlates while you're training, right? So like one thing that that going to failure and getting the feeling of failure in like lifting situation, right? So think about like any time that you thought that that was your last rep. I just had a, a one of my athletes that I was working with. Um, we did a burnout, a light set of burnouts that I was like, do about fifty. Uh, you should be able to do fifty plus of this of this movement, right? And so we were rolling, we were rolling, we were rolling. Gets to fifty and he's he's done. I was like, I didn't even I didn't help you yet. Like you're not done because you could have done another rep. You didn't go to failure. And so explaining what that failure was, was not going to 50 because that's where it's hard. But in the lifting aspect of this, going to failure is going until you can't do the movement and then getting a little bit of an assist from a, from a, you know, a spotter or, or a coach or someone. And, and that's your failure rep. You know what I mean? So we ended up, I, I didn't let him stop. We ended up getting, I think, to 64. Um, before he couldn't do any more himself. And mm -hmm. so that was very valuable in, in his eyes of seeing, okay, I, I had 14 reps and left in the tank. And my failure was that I thought, or I thought my failure in my mind was 50 reps because that was a 50 plus was what came out of my coach's mouth. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I hit the bottom of that expectation, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but then he learned that valuable lesson of this is what failure actually means. If he says go to failure, he doesn't mean uh, go to the random reps that he pulled out of the and told, you know, told me that I could probably do. But it is go until you can't go anymore. And so that's one of the failure things. Um, and that's how valuable knowing what that failure is in the lifting side of things. Um, but I think two is not being afraid of failure. And a lot of that comes in, in your training as well is, you know, we are here and, and, and athletes need to push their limits. And so when you train to, uh, not afraid of failure, box jump that you don't think you can get, but then you're going to accomplish it. You know, a lot of people and box jump is, is a particularly good example, I think, because so many people, uh, the box jump is one thing that I, that I've seen a million times where people will start jumping and be like, oh no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna attempt that rep. I just don't feel like I can get up there, you know. And especially like with our boxes here, you don't have to worry about it now. So like you're not gonna injure yourself mm -hmm. um, because they're soft boxes. But 
like like trying that rep, getting up there. We just saw post uh, Cody um, doing four, was it forty eight forty eight yeah. inches, and there was a couple times where you know he jumped up, a foot slipped, he didn't quite get high enough, but then there was one where he stuck it. He got high enough, got his legs up, and and stuck it. So the he failed a couple times, but if if he would have thought of failure as such a bad thing that he's like did it couldn't do it done you know then he's not taking failure as um as as a learning step as a what do i need to do do i I need to push a little bit harder on this jump to get up there i need to you know pick my knees up on this next jump to to get up there and and so that's you know another training example of it but the big thing that i want everybody to concentrate on this week is in your life in general there's going to be things that that you need to fail at in order to be um in order to improve your life in order to improve your situation in order to prove like we we talked about that example the the other week about you know getting the promotion waking up 10 minutes early whatever um you know there's things in work in in life that if you're afraid to try something because you may fail then you just you just failed and that's permanent if you didn't try it you know what i mean yeah. so so the fact that uh, you you know failure needs to be a part of you can't be afraid of failure and if it does happen then you make adjustments you adapt going back to another one of our word of the week um you know make sure that you prepare so that you're not failing because of lack of preparation which is again going to last week's um word of the week but um if you've done everything you can and you do fail maybe you didn't do everything that you could, you mm-hmm. know, or maybe you need to take an extra step in, in, in succeeding. And so um, thinking about failure today or this week into things, if you feel fear for the potential of failure, that's something you should actually do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's something that you should push yourself to try to advance at. That's something you should, um, you know, take the opportunity to, to try again and, um, you know, with, with you guys, just a quick question, you know, as far as failure goes, what, is there anything that you can think of that you failed on? Um, you know, it can be as simple as a, a rep lifting that, that then you made some adjustments or you came back and, and failure wasn't the case in the second time. That's tough. I haven't built anything, question. honestly. <laughs> right? It's actually, actually, that's that's perfect, perfect, actually. Yeah, that's I, right. I very rarely fail. <laughs> that's what I like to do. <laughs> No, I mean, I've, you know, over the course of, you know, my, you know, athletic career and, you know, academic and everything, um, you know, I mean, I'm just like everybody else, you know, I, you know, so like, like baseball is a really good example. Baseball is a game of failure, you know, so when I was, you know, a position player, you know, batting, um, you know, in baseball, if you, as a hitter, if you succeed and get on base three times out of 10, you are considered like amazing. Like an amazing, like, yeah, right. You get yeah. to the like the MLB level. You get to the Hall of Fame if you succeed three times out of ten. Right. You know, so that's one of those you know those really really hard things. And I think you know playing baseball my whole life really taught me, you know, that it's okay to fail to an extent. And again, that you know, um, I don't know. I had a good thought in my head, and I just totally lost. <laughs> that's it right. There. No, but I, I agree. And but yeah, I mean, it's, something... it's totally one of those mental things where yeah. you know you really really do have to get over the fact of. You know, because it's frustrating, and you know, in baseball, you know, it's so it's like in any sport. You know, you go through ups and downs, and you know, when you're hitting, you know, there's there's games where you know the the ball is like a beach ball coming in, and you could just stick your bat out there and you know get a hit. And, and there's you know, I, there was one time I think like my sophomore junior year that I went like you know six games, and it was just like I just couldn't you know hit anything. Right. You know, I could have a, an oar out there and I couldn't hit anything. You know? <laughs> and it's just so frustrating when, you know, failure is, you know, more or less expected in that position. And then, but it just keeps happening. It keeps happening. Right. It keeps mm-hmm. happening. And it's so hard mentally to, you know, get over that. So it's just a matter of figuring out, you know, what I think I went and I, you know, went and did like a one on one little. My coach, and this is, again, I had an awesome baseball coach, and he took, you know, an hour out of practice time where he sent everyone else and did their thing, and he just spent an hour with me, you know, one-on-one, you know, breaking everything. I mean, I started from the beginning, and I literally yeah. broke everything down, restarted everything, built everything back up, and, you know, the next day, everything. So you did, you did extra so, work, and that's yeah. something that you learned from failure. You might not have, you might have developed a better swing or just a little bit tweaked your um, stance or whatever it might have been, 
that helped you in the future right. because, because you, of that you failure, felt, yeah. because of that failure for yeah. a long time. And so that's something that, that everybody can concentrate on is, you know, you have to make, don't, don't just fail and, and not do anything about it. Identify why you failed and then make changes like you did. You made the, you took that time and that helped take that time to break that down and make that failure into a success. And so that's what we want to make sure we're concentrating on this week. Um, and when you get to that point, you know, get, uh, you know, to the point where you might fail, how are you going to react to it? Um, and hopefully you react like an athlete, but that's kind of, that's going to be our time for today. So, um, thank you, Jake, for, uh, for stopping in. Thank Thanks you, Zach, as always. On. And, uh, remember you're an athlete.